boxing fans, this is Bill Stern, official film sports reporter, bringing you dramatic highlights from famous fights of yesteryear. For this one, we take you back to the old, old Madison Square Garden. In the night, Big Bill Brennan met Louis Angel Furpo, Argentina's famed wild bull of the Pampas. Furpo here for a shot at the great Manassas Mauler and a chance to take that title back to South America. A big, awkward, stumbling sort of a fighter, but definitely a threat. And this was one of the milestones that led to his eventual meeting with Dempsey. Brennan gave Jack plenty of trouble when the two squared off in the same old arena. And the veteran warrior is trying to prove his right to stay with the top notchers. For 10, yes, 11 rounds, Brennan has the edge on Furpo. This same Furpo, who almost won the heavyweight crown when he knocked Jack Dempsey through the ropes that memorable night in New York's polo ground. But Brennan will get in the way of Furpo's right. And the Furpo, well, his right is something that the South Americans are writing home about. In fact, neither of them are exactly tossing powder puff blows. And the battle is hard fought and close every inch of the way. Comes this, the fateful 12th. Brennan's edge on the Latin is waning. All Purple wants is to land one of those terrific rights, and he'll close up shop for the night. Call it luck or call it skill. The Wild Bull finally tosses one of those haymakers, and Brennan hits the canvas, hardly knowing what landed on him. Purple is waved to a neutral corner. And as the referee chants the count, it's all over. Brennan is wielded and whipped. He can't move. The referee has to help him to his corner. Dramatic finale to a career as colorful and promising as any man ever to enter the ring. Trying a comeback meets Louis Angel Fipo, Wild Bull of the Pampas. The two Goliaths go to it in a slugging match that looks like anybody's fight for eight exciting rounds. the powerful arms that have brought disaster to a long list of victims. With those weapons, Louis Angel Furpo has clubbed his way past fighter after fighter. Furpo knows that Dempsey can throw a punch so fast, you can't even see it coming. So he puts in a lot of work on the small punching bag to increase his own punching speed, knowing that he's got to hit faster than Dempsey.
And here at his training camp in White Sulphur Springs, the Manasseh Mauler, champion Jack Dempsey, goes through strenuous training. He knows that Purple has tremendous strength and power. That one good punch from the wild bull of the Pappas could flatten him. He's taking Purple more seriously than any opponent since he won the championship. Jack works on the heavy bag to increase his punching power. Here is an excellent close-up of Dempsey, showing the grim seriousness on his face. Jack knows he's in the toughest fight of his career. The champion spars with a middleweight to sharpen the speed and accuracy of his punching. The fabulous promoter Tex Rickard. He made the fight game a million dollar business and he's got another million dollar gate for this one. New York's Polo Ground, September 14th, 1923, the afternoon of the fight. The musicians, lucky guys, not only get good seats, but also get paid for their time. The boys up in the bleachers come early and are rewarded with seats, while outside, thousands jam the streets bitterly disappointed. Among the reporters at ringside is everybody who is anybody, the greatest names in the business from all over the world. The fateful moment has arrived, and here they are in the ring. Purpo, the wild bull of the Pappas, in his corner. Jack Dempsey, the popular champion, brings a roar from the crowd. Both are calm, each confident he will come out the winner. Joe Humphreys, one of the greatest ring announcers of all time. He won't use the loudspeaker system. He says, that's for sissies. He introduces Jack Dempsey. Now, Fairpo is introduced to this huge crowd of 86,000 excited fight fans. The instructions by the referee. Everyone is tense with excitement. Round one. Dempsey doesn't wait to start swinging. He's in there to make it short. Dempsey in the white trunks, Firpo in the black. Firpo's down. It was a lightning fast right to the body. He takes a three count. Firpo hanging on. Dempsey's speed is too much for him. Firpo's down again. Up without a count. Dempsey knocks him down a third time. Firpo takes a one count. Three knockdowns by Dempsey in the first round, not even half over. Purple down a fourth time. The crowd's going wild. Looks like it's all over. Up at nine and down again the fifth time. But he won't stay down. Purple like a wild bull, enraged by pain. Dempsey's right cross drops Purple again. The sixth time. Down again for the seventh time in this first round. Dempsey can't put him away for keeps. He calls Purple a wild bull, and he really is. A terrific right by Purple, and Dempsey goes flying out of the ring. The referee's amazed, almost forgets the count, but Dempsey comes back into the ring. He got back just in time, just before the count of ten. Jack can't take any chances now. Another of those terrific rights by Purple, and it might be curtains for Dempsey. The 
end of round one, the most amazing round in American ring history. Now let's take a better look at Dempsey being knocked out of the ring. The picture is stopped to show you the right that did it. There he goes, into the laps of the reporters. There's a terrific controversy at ringside over whether Dempsey comes back under his own power or is lifted back by the reporters. This is one of the historic moments in all ring history. Grippo now desperately trying for a knockout, but Dempsey weathers the storm. Round two. Dempsey in the white trunks. Dempsey isn't taking any more chances on Purple's wild swings. Jack's manager, Doc Kearns, told him to end it fast. Purple's down again. It was a left hook to the body, a right to the jaw, fast as lightning. Up at four, but this time he's badly hurt. The ninth time, a blasting left foot to the chin, a right cross on the button, Dempsey's favorite combination. Purple trying desperately to get up, but this time he can't make it. It's all over. It was a short fight, but never was there one packed with so much action. Now here's the knockout in slow motion. That wild right by Purple could have knocked Jack Dempsey out. Now Purple hangs on for dear life. Even the referee can't break it up. Dempsey can't pry himself loose. This Purple is the strongest man Jack has ever met. Jack finally forces his left arm free, crosses a smashing right to the jaw. The picture stopped so that you can see the punch just before it lands. Purple is down. Flat on his back, the wild bull doesn't even hear the start of the referee's count. Yes, the big fight is over. And Jack Dempsey proves to all the world that the rougher the going, the tougher he is. In Argentina, news of Fairfield's defeat quickly spreads to the huge crowds awaiting in the streets. And the people hear the news with tears streaming down their faces. It's a national calamity. But the great crowd here in the polo grounds is wild with joy at Dempsey's victory. So Jack Dempsey still wears his world heavyweight crown, gloriously defended, for in all the history of ring warfare, there never was such a battle. These two men fought almost like wild animals in one of the most amazing fights that man has ever seen. And Jack Dempsey is hailed as the greatest champion of all time. <laughs>